Hello friends, this video on data handling part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will talk about double bar graph. So double bar graph is a, an improved version of bar graph. So what we do is here it shows two sets of data simultaneously because in bar graph it represents one set of data like scores of students in a class. But here it represents two sets of data. Maybe it can show scores of students in a class for two different semesters. So that means two things are shown at the same time. So let us look at this example. Let's say that a survey was conducted in your class in 2014 and this survey was about the favorite fruits of different children and this was the result of that survey. So in 2014 it was found that apple is the most liked fruit and banana is the most disliked fruit. And the same survey was conducted again in 2015 and that time again it was seen that apple was the most liked fruit. So you are basically conducting the same survey, the same set of data for two different years. Now, if you want to compare these two sets of data, so do you think that these two sets of data can be put together in one graph? Because right now you see two different graphs. One graph is for 2014, the other graph is for 2015. So is there any way we can combine these two graphs? Yes, you can. And that is when you draw a double bar graph. So you see here also this is a bar graph, but instead of one bar, for every item you have two bars. So the green bars here and this tells you which bar represents what. So whenever you see green bars, they represent 2014 and wherever you see blue bars, they represent 2015. So you see this shows that in 2014, almost 50 students liked Apple and in 2015, around 42 students liked Apple. So basically the, num the liking for Apple has reduced from 2014 to 2015. That is the liking of fruits. Now looking at all these graphs, you can very quickly say that the liking of all the fruits have decreased from 2014 to 2015. That's because everywhere you see that the 2014 bars are higher than the 2015 bars. So these double bar graph, they actually help you to compare two different sets of data. So in this case, looking at the double bar graph, you can very easily compare the liking or disliking of fruits in 2014 with that in 2015. So let us now try to draw a double bar graph. The concept will still remain the same. It is just that in this case, we will draw, draw two bars for a particular item. So here the performance of students in first term and second term is given. So that means you can draw one bar graph for the scores of student in different subjects for one term. Similarly, you can draw another bar for the other term and that's how you get a double bar graph. So let's get started. So as usual, first we will draw the x-axis and the y-axis. So let's say this is x-axis and this is y-axis. This is the origin. So on the x-axis, we represent the subjects and on the y-axis, we represent the marks. Now we have to choose a suitable scale. Now let us first look at the range of marks. So what is the minimum marks that you see? The minimum marks that we can see is 65. And what is the maximum marks that you see? We see 95. So we actually need to represent values starting from 65 till 95. So how should we, uh, you know, like, um, choose a scale. So here also let us choose, let, let us consider that one unit represent 10 marks. So this is going to be convenient because we have to mark it till 100 because 95 is the maximum marks. So let's say this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So this is how we have chosen a scale on the y-axis. Now let us start drawing the bars. So let's say here the first bar that we will draw is for English. So English first term the score was 67. So 67 would be somewhere here because this midpoint would be 65 and slightly above that would be 67. So let's say this is 67. So we draw a bar 
So this would be the score of English in first term. And in second term, the score was 70. So let's draw another bar immediately after it. And that should represent 70. So the lines are not straight here. So please ignore the, all those parts. So let us shade one graph. Maybe the graph for second term is shaded. So that's how we draw two bars for English. One for first term and the other one for second term. So here it is very important to mention that this type of bars represent first term and this type of shaded bars represent second term so that it becomes easier for viewers to analyze what is being represented on the data. Now let us do it, the same thing for Hindi. So in Hindi first term score was 72. So 72 would be slightly above 70. So let's say this is 72. And in second term the score was 65. So which would be somewhere here. So this is for second term. So let's shade this because second term needs to be shaded. So this is how you get double bars for Hindi. Similarly, you do it for maths. So for maths in the first term, it is 88. So 88 would be very close to 90 like this. And in the second term, it was even greater. That is, it was 95. So 95 would be somewhere here. So the second term needs to be shaded. So in this pattern, you can do it for all the remaining subjects like science and social science. And this is how you can draw a bar graph. So at the end of it, you get a bar, double bar graph like this. Now looking at this double bar graph, what are the information that you can get very easily? Now let us say that which subject shows the best improvement from first term to second term? So any subject that has shown improvement will have a taller second term graph because the score in second term will be more. So which all subject showed improvement? So we can say subjects which showed improvement from first term to second term. So which subject showed improvement? English? Yes, because in English you see in the second term the graph is taller. Hindi, do you think that Hindi has showed improvement? In Hindi, the graph has come down. That means Hindi did not show improvement. Maths, did it show improvement? Yes. Science, yes. Social science, yes. Because for English, Maths, Science and Social Science, the second term graph is taller than the first term bar. Right? So we can very easily say that which all subject showed improvement, which subject did not show improvement. Now, if, if we ask which subject shows the best improvement, that means which is that subject where this difference is the maximum. So all these four subjects showed improvement, but where do we see that the difference is maximum? Though we see the maximum difference in case of maths. So we can say that maths showed maximum improvement from first term to second term. So in this way, looking at double bar graph, you can actually uh, get an idea about a lot of information that is being added by the double bar graph. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.